before we dive into this brand new series called The Leftover Challenge, I'm going to need a couple of volunteers today. So I want you to sort of uh, go at it about this way. How many people love to eat? Raise your hand and keep your hands up. Okay. Okay, now, for those of you that did not eat, keep your hands up. Hands up, hands up. Oh my. For those of you that did not eat breakfast, keep your hands up. Everybody else pull your hands down. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Uh, now, how many of you would be willing to eat a meal in front of the crowd today while I preach? Keep your hands up. <laughs> Got a few of you? Come on up. Come on up. Listen, you wear a Kentucky Wildcats t-shirt, I'll bring you up on stage. <laughs> That's right, you give a little love to Kentucky Wildcats, number one in the nation. <laughs> All right, guys, come over here and have a seat. And uh, it's all good, yeah? No, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. I don't often share the stage with other people. And so this is a treat for me. And because they're my guests, I, I want to hook you guys up with a little breakfast this morning. Now, I know one of the things that I, I used to do in college, still do from time to time, for breakfast at times I will have cold leftover pizza. Yeah. Anybody like cold leftover pizza? Yeah. There you, look, look, look here. See? I don't know. There you go. You guys have, you've, got, you've got about a half hour you can finish that. Does that sound good? Anybody else want a piece? No? no? Man, you actually, listen, you're my guest today. And uh, I'm very rude in sharing leftover pizza with you, okay? So instead, uh, how would you like to have homemade oatmeal and cinnamon pancakes made by my wife? My wife slaved over this stuff. So bring out some pancakes. Let's get this off the stage. We've got pancakes. And listen, if you've never had these before, you want the recipe. They're incredible. Brown sugar syrup? Yes. Yes, please. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You good? Here, you might want to scoot that over. Scoot yours over here this little. I don't want to, I don't want to touch your food. Right, no, scoot the, scoot the pancake. There you go. Mmm. And they're warm, too, yeah. I'm telling you, I hooked you guys up. That's one of my favorite things that my wife fixes for breakfast, but there's something else that I've got. Uh, ladies, could you bring out a little of that casserole? Anybody like breakfast casserole? This is fresh out of the oven this morning, guys. And this is good stuff here. I'll serve it. Look at here. It's got sausage and lots of gooey cheese. No, I'm trying to hook you up. Look at that. Look at that. Listen, you guys have 30 minutes, so eat slowly. Eat slowly. Take your time. And I'm going to actually leave this out here, so if you want more, don't be ashamed. So, am I missing anything? Oh, something to drink. Okay, uh... Orange juice, coffee? Orange juice. orange juice? Orange juice? Okay, bring the orange juice and coffee out, guys. Because since they don't like coffee, I do, so I'm going to have a cup, if that's okay. So we've got a little OJ here. Thank you. Yeah. Mmm. This is good. This is good. Anybody jealous? Yeah. Yes. You people? Yeah. yeah. And look, if you're still thirsty, hook it up. No coffee for you guys? Yeah, see, Cindy likes to have that frou-frou uh, cream and ice and stuff that I like my to black. And so I'm going to have coffee this morning, if that's okay. Mm. I sort of hope they wouldn't like coffee, so I can have something. How about that? Yeah. So let's give them a hand. They look like they're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, as they eat, and as we enjoy watching them and experiencing that, you may get to hunger yourself as you smell. But I want to ask this question. How many of you want to live a blessed life? Raise your hand. Yeah? All of us do, right? I want to live a, a life that is so blessed that people that are around me begin to take notice. Wouldn't you like to do that? Wouldn't you like to live a life that was so blessed that people would be like, what in the world is happening in your life that is making you be so blessed by God? But to be honest about it, as we take stock in our life, sometimes we don't feel that way, do we? We look at the things that we struggle with in our life and, and, and we 
really have a hard time seeing some of the blessing that we have. And, and we sort of feel like, I'm not blessed. Amen. I mean, we all want the blessed life. But here's the good news. The good news is this. God wants that for you. God wants you to have a blessed life. I mean, that is the truth. God wants you to live in the sweet spot of His success. Not the world's success, okay? But He wants you to live in the sweet spot of, of, of His success. Well, how do we do that? How do we go around living this blessed life? How do we enter into the sweet spot of God's success? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to sort of change our perspective on a few things. We have to come to an understanding. The first thing that we have to come to the understanding of is that God is the bless or. I know that's not proper grammar, but for all practical purposes, this is what we're talking about today. God is the bless or in our life. He's the one that gives us everything that we have. He gives us everything in our life, everything in this world for our enjoyment. And also to bring Him glory. Okay? What, what does He give us? I mean, He gives us sunlight. He gives us nice clothes to wear. He gives us homes to live in. He gives us incredible food to eat. He gives us chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah. 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 Chocolate's a blessing. But I want you to check this out. We're going to flip over into Genesis chapter 1. We're going all the way to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Then God said, Let us... Make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along in the ground. So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along in the ground. And then God said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for food. And I have given every green plant as for food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along in the ground. Everything that has life. And that is what has happened. God created this entire world. He created everything. And the Bible tells us that He created everything for you. He created all of this stuff that we could enjoy, that we could reign over. He, he gave us creation so that it could be a blessing for our life. But He also created all of this wonderful stuff in the world so that we could bring Him glory. That's the understanding because God is the, the blessed sword. This is where he, everything comes from and, and we are the recipients of, of, of His blessing. And again, we sort of go back to that feeling that we have as we look into our life and we say, Lance, I'm not blessed. Oh, really? You're not blessed? I mean, look at your life. And you, you, again, it's, it's all about changing your perspective. Okay? How many of you have a roof over your head at home? How many of you have clothes on your back? Obviously, all of you. Okay, that was a pretty easy question to answer. How many of you got to eat today? We know two people have at least. <laughs> if you fit into those categories, you are more wealthy than 75% of everyone in the entire earth. The top 25% most wealthy people exist in this place today. And sometimes we think about that and we think, okay, well, that's, that's well and good, Lance, but I still don't feel very blessed. Well, let me help change your perspective just a little bit more. How many of you have any money whatsoever in your pocket right now? Yeah, almost everybody. A few of you don't. <laughs> um, how many of you have a little money in the bank, whether it's a savings account or a checking account? Just even 50 cents, whatever. Okay? So... Also, how many of you have maybe a, a coffee mug or something at home that you keep change in or you have a few dollar bills rolled up? We do, right? We have this little flower pot that we put change in, right? If you can say yes to those categories, all of a sudden that puts you in a whole other tax bracket in the world's economy. Because now you went from being the top 25% to being the top 8% in the world. If you can say yes to those categories, you are more wealthy than 92% of the entire world population. You say, well, I'm not blessed. Yes, you are. You see, it's a matter of perspective. You know, we, we, we sort of, uh, 
we sort of bow down to the American dream sometimes and we think because so-and-so has more than I do, I'm not blessed anymore. But as you think about those numbers, you think about those statistics, I mean, that really is sort of a game changer for us because it, it reorganizes the way that we think about things. And so we have to remember that God is the bless or. And if God is the bless or, then that makes us the blessed. God is the blessor. He creates everything for our enjoyment and for His glory. But He, he takes His bless and He gives it to us. And he, the blessor makes us blessed. Can we follow that? Is everybody on the same page with me? Amen. Okay. God is the blessor and we are the blessed. Now here's the question. Why do we refuse to recognize our state of blessedness? In the American culture, why do we refuse to, to recognize our state of blessedness? The answer is simple. It's because we want it all. We don't want just a little bit of this or a little bit of that. I mean, we want all of that stuff. And I mean, a lot of us, we're desperately seeking God's success. We're desperately seeking this path to the blessed life. And the problem is, is that we live in a very special little place that I like to call the land of of Ing. We don't live in the United States of America anymore. We live in the land of Ing. And somebody's like, oh, what are you talking about? Follow me here. We are into Oni. We are into saving. We are into vacationing. Somebody help me out. Spending. Oh, we are into spending. Come on. Eating. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> we are into eating. Hoarding. Oh, they got a show about that on TV. <laughs> Hoarding. <laughs> Indulging. Right? So you see, this list keeps on getting bigger. And bigger, we're into the bling bling. <laughs> and as we go to the cash register, it says what? Kaching. Kaching. This is the land of Ing, and this is where we live in our culture. Okay? We don't live in the sweet spot of God's success. Instead, we live in this place called the land of Ing. Coffee. Some people enjoy drinking. Hopefully you're drinking the right thing. Right? But a lot of this stuff, as you take stock of your life, and you realize that maybe you're living in this land of Eng, you've all of a sudden realized that a lot of these things that we are pursuing blessedness really boil down to a selfish attitude, don't they? It really is about us. It really is about what we want. And we have our idea of what the blessed life is. But sometimes our perspective is skewed. And so if you want to discover how to live the most blessed life, now don't get me wrong, a great vacation is, is a great blessing, right? Okay? A great meal is a great blessing. Okay? But if this is your focus, that blessing is temporary. So instead of living in the land of Eng, what we have to do is we have to figure out what to do with the Eng. Okay? We're going to figure out what to do with the Eng. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 17, 18. He did all of this. We're talking about God's blessing here, right? He did all of this so you would never say to yourself, I achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember, the Lord your God, He is the one who gives you the power to be successful. In order to fulfill the covenant, he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. God gave it all to you. Everything that you own, every piece of jewelry you're wearing, every ounce of clothing that you have on, every morsel of food that you, you, you eat, God gave every bit of that to you. And you have the nerve to say, I'm not wealthy. Top 8%. Every single person in here is wealthy, not by American standards necessarily, but by the world standards. You are rich beyond measure. And God gave every bit of it to you. Even more than that, God gave you the ability. He gave you the intelligence. He gave you the understanding and the know-how of how to get what you have. It all comes from God. 
You see, God knows us better than anyone else in this world, and He understands the temptations that you and I go through. He understands the temptation of the aim thing. He knows that as we move through this world, we begin to get so focused on all of this stuff that we lose focus of, of His purpose. We lose sight of His purpose, yet He blesses us anyway. Most of us have lost our way. We've lost sight of what's important in life. But yet, we look at our life and we understand, well, God has still blessed me. Why? Have you ever wondered why God continues to bless you even, even though you know that you probably don't deserve it? God gives it to you with a hope. He gives it to you with a hope that your perspective will change and you'll begin to understand that this stuff that we have isn't merely for, for, for fun. It's a tool. Everything that you have in your life is a tool that God has given you to make a difference. He gave it to you for two reasons. We've already covered it. He created it. He did create it for your enjoyment. He did create it so that you could enjoy the things that He gave you, but He also created it so that you could bring Him glory. Remember, God is the blessed or we are the what? Blessed. Blessed. Let's try that again. God is the blessed or we are the what? Blessed. Thank you. Good job. Excellent. So God's the blesser, we are the blessed. And this in thing that we're doing in, in, in our life is rooted a lot of times in selfishness. And we have to change our perspective in that. Well, but what happens, what has to happen in order for us to change that perspective? This is what we need to do. God has a bless for us. And we want to know what we need to do with the ing. We need to let God put His bless on our aim so that we become what? We need to put our, let God put His bless on our aim so that we become what? Blessing. That's the pathway to the blessed life. It's not about the selfish things that we pursue in our life. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with some of those things. But if that's our pursuit, if that's our purpose in life, we won't be blessed. You won't be blessed if you only live your life in the land of Eng. It's more so found in becoming a blessing to other people. You want to be blessed in life, you become a blessing. That's where the abundant life that Jesus talked about happens. John chapter 10, verse number 10. It says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy it. But my purpose, Jesus' purpose, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That sounds like a blessed life, doesn't it? A rich and satisfying life. You see, the devil, he wants you to fall into the land of Ain. He roams around and seeking those whom he may devour. He wants you to fall into the land of Ain. He wants you to fall into that selfish trap because he wants to rob you of your joy in life. He sort of dangles this carrot and says, you know what, this stuff over here, this is going to make you happy. And He steals the joy from your life. He robs you of that purpose. That's His whole heart. He wants to derail everything in your life. And so He dangles the land of being out in front of you and He says, that's where blessing is found. That's where, that's where happiness is found. He sucks the fulfillment right out of your life. And so blessing is not found in the, in the land of being. It's found in something else. And again, the question is, what are we doing with the being? What is it that we're doing with the ink? Well, in order to figure that out, we've got to figure out what is my ink. What is uh, my ink? Again, the things that we focus on, the things that we hoard, a lot of them are rooted in selfishness. But a lot of them are all boiled down to three, three categories. This is our ink. Our time, our talents, and our treasure. Our time and our talents and our treasure. If you want to live a blessed life, you've got to learn how to leverage these three things. You've got to learn how to use these three things. These are the tools that God has for you. He's the, these are the things He wants you to use. Well, how do you use your time? How is it that, 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 that you take the what little time you have in, the, in this culture and use it so that you can be blessed? We know what time is. It's something we don't have enough of, right? You've got the 9 to 5. Some of you are the 7 to 6. You've got your kids, you've got basketball games, you've got your favorite TV show, you've got the things that you do with your friends. 
And we seem to run out of time. Some of us have a lot of free time. Some of us don't have very much. But we have to remember that we have to change our perspective on time and quit viewing it as a selfish commodity and remember that it's a tool that God gave you. He gave you a limited amount of time on this world to make a difference. And so the question you need to ask about your time is, number one, is your time really fulfilling your life? Some of you would say yes. Some of you would say no. But also, is your time bringing glory to God? Those are the two questions you've got to ask about time. Is your time fulfilling your life? Is it making a difference in you? And also, is it bringing glory to God? What about our talents? What are are our talents? Well, what is it that you're good at in life? What are the things that you can do better than anybody else? What are you good at? Some people say, "I'm, I'm good at nothing. Certainly you are. You may have to dig a little deeper to figure out what it is, but you're good at something, I'll guarantee you. Some people are really good about building things. Some people are very smart and can work through mathematical problems. Some of you are very good with your hands. Some of you have a great knack at keeping things clean. (laughs) I don't. Some of you are good teachers. Some of you are great cooks. Some of you are athletic. All of those things are talents that God enables you to do. How are you using those talents? Look in your life. What are you good at? How are you using them? Ask the same two questions. Are your talents giving you fulfillment in life? And do you bring God glory with them? Are your talents bringing you fulfillment in life? And are you bringing God glory with them? So you've got your time, you've got your talents, and now you've got your treasure. Now what are we talking about with treasure? I think all of us can put two and two together. It boils down to one word, stuff. We're not just talking about money. We're talking about everything that you possess. Everything you have in your life is a treasure. Yeah, it's the green stuff, but your home is a treasure. Your vehicle is a treasure. Your jewelry is a treasure. Your musical instruments are all treasures. All of us have stuff, right? You brought a lot of stuff with you uh, today. And so we've all got these little piles of stuff. Now, some of us have great big piles of stuff, right? You know a few people that's got great big piles of stuff. Some of us have these little medium piles of stuff. And then the rest of us have these little bitty piles of stuff. You follow me? All of us have stuff. We are blessed beyond measure. We are the most wealthy people in the entire planet. We've all got stuff. Your pile of stuff may be bigger than mine, but it's your stuff and that's my stuff. You're not responsible for someone else's stuff. If you feel responsible for somebody else's stuff, you know what you suffer from? Materialism. You're only responsible for what you have, not what you don't have. And again, I ask you the same two questions. Does your stuff really bring you joy in life? And are you using the stuff... To bring glory to God. Answer those questions honestly in your life. For all three of those things. For time, talents, and treasures. Are those things really bringing joy to your life or not? Are those things bringing joy to your life? And are they making a difference? Are they bringing glory to God? And for a lot of us, if we really get honest about these two areas, the answer is a resounding no. Some of the most depressed people in the world are some of the most wealthy people. Because they live in the land of Ain. Because their focus isn't on bringing God glory. Their focus is solely on bringing joy to themselves. You're going to learn something about that here in just a moment. But we don't want the answer to those things to be no. See, we struggle with that because we do live in the land of Eden. We're pursuing the Eden. That's our focus. That's our heart. These times, talents, and, and, and treasures. And we're trying to put the Eden on so many other things in our life. And we lose sight of what God wants for us. Okay? Now here's something important. You say, well Lance, you don't want me to go on a vacation anymore. I didn't say that. God wants you to enjoy vacation. You say, well Lance, you don't want me to own anything anymore. God gives you resources to own things. You don't want me to indulge anymore. You know what? It's okay to indulge. You ladies that have fine jewelry, it's okay to wear some bling bling. There's nothing wrong with that. But as you look at all of those things and ask those two questions, 
Is the bling bling really bringing me joy in my life? Well, if the answer is no, we need to figure out something so that you can refocus where you're seeking that joy from. Nothing wrong with having it. Feels pretty good to have some of that stuff, doesn't it? But it doesn't last forever. Asking yourself, does it bring glory to God? That's what God wants from us. He wants us to bring glory in everything that we do. He wants us to enjoy the ing and enjoy the ing spent on ourselves. But He also wants us to remain others focused as well. Because it's not just a tool to make you happy. It's a tool to be a blessing to others. We want God's blessed to be put on our ing, don't we? Amen? So that's our goal today. And really for us, as we think about the selfishness of our lives, we all suffer from it. Selfishness is not the path to blessing. It's this little word called generosity. Generosity. And I've said it before here. I challenge our church to be a generous church. Out in the community, everywhere that you go to be a generous people because it's through generosity, it's through looking at the needs of others and trying your very best to fulfill that need is where your personal fulfillment is going to come from. It's giving of yourself to help other people, to make a difference in other people's life, even sacrificing at times. I mean, think about these guys over here. You're full. You all did okay. And I've got leftover casserole for myself. That's good, right? These were guests on this stage. When I have guests come over to my house, you think I'm going to pull out leftovers and feed them for dinner? How many of you have ever been to my house? Raise your hand. Several of you. How many of you have ever felt le fed leftovers? None. How many of you would ever feed leftovers to a guest that comes into your home? None of us. Well, one of us. <laughs> Just make sure it's good leftovers. Point being is we're going to sacrifice a little bit to make sure our guests feel loved, to make sure that they feel welcomed. We want to do the same thing to the world. We want to do the same thing for the people in our life. We want to give them our very best. We want to allow God to put His bless on our ink so that we can become what? Blessed. Okay, let's try it again. We want God to put His bless on our ink so that we can become what? Blessed. A blessing. That's how you live a, a, a blessed life. And something funny happens. When I become a blessing to other people, guess what? I get blessed. That's where the fulfillment comes from. You want to get filled up on fulfillment, you start being a blessing to those people. Make a difference in someone's life. You know what? I made a difference in their life today. It's not very significant. It's actually very small. But did you enjoy what you ate? Were you happy that you came up and ate that food today? I made a difference. Does it have eternal? Yeah, you can give it a hand. It's all good. But in that moment of time, I was a blessing for them. You know what? That blesses me. It makes me feel good that I was able to help someone to have a great breakfast this morning. So how? How do we continue to do that? How do we leverage these things so that we can live a blessed life? Okay? Again, it's from the understanding that our time and our talents and our treasures all come from God. They all belong to Him in the first place. Okay? You've got to come to that understanding. We have to come to the understanding that, 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 that those things exist, yes, to bring us joy, but they're also there for us to bring God glory. But how do we truly enjoy the aim? Okay? How do we experience His glory in our life? How do we experience those blessings? I want to share with you five things today. Sort of a five-point plan, a five-step plan for God to put His bless on your aim. Okay? I want to challenge you guys to, to take notes on this stuff. I want to challenge you guys to apply these things to your life. The very first thing that you have to do is you have to examine your priorities. You've got to examine what's important in your life. I mean, what is it that's important in your life? What are the priorities in your life? I love Philippians chapter 2, verse number 3. Paul says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking about others as better than yourself. You see, the, the question is, are the important things in your life rooted in selfishness? Or are they rooted in the idea that you desire to honor God? It's a question you need to ask yourself. Are your priorities rooted in selfishness or do you really want to honor God? See, look at this verse. It says, think of others as better than yourself. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of others as better than yourself. The true mark of a mature believer is being other-centered. 
that you're looking out for the needs of others. Now, am I telling you that you never look, need to look out for your own needs? No, I'm not telling you that at all. We all need to look out for our own needs. But when we neglect the other people in our life, we're falling short of the calling that God has given us. Amen. You've got to think of others better than yourself. You have to think about things that really matter to God. And you've got to move those things up the priority list in your life. Okay, so examine your priorities. Number two, you need to inventory your assets. You need to inventory your assets. You need to look at your stuff. What is it that you have to offer? What is it that you have to offer to be a blessing? What's your aim? What is your aim? What is the time that you have to give to people? Are you hoarding your time and you don't have any time for anyone else? You may need to reorganize some of those things. What kind of tra- talents do you have? Are you wasting your talents on someone uh, on something that, that really has no value? Or can you focus that in helping someone else to become better in their life? And what about your treasure? Are you, you hoarding up every ounce of stuff that you can get your hands on just for your own enjoyment and you're never sharing it with someone else in need? You've got to inventory your assets. Romans, Romans chapter 12 verse number 6 says, In His grace, God has given us different gifts. For doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. It talks about one little inventory of asset there. It talks about just one little gift there. But basically what this verse is saying is saying, shake what your daddy gave you. Okay? God has blessed you with so many things in your life. The time, the talents, and treasures. All of these things. and, And he's equipped us all differently. But He wants us to all use everything that we have differently. Some of us have a different allotment of time. Some of us have a lot. Some of us don't have very much. But God wants us to use that time to make a difference. Some of us are more talented in certain areas than others. But God wants you to use your talents to make a difference. You know, regardless of what you have or don't have, you're only responsible for the things that you possess. For your time, for your talents, and for your treasure. So my challenge for you today is learn, don't waste your resources. Don't waste your resources. Learn to leverage them so that they bring glory to God. Understand what that means. Understand what you have to offer. Make plans to use those things and be prepared to use them when God gives you the opportunity because He will. When you open up the door to ask Him to say, God, use what I have to make a difference in someone else's life, He will give you that opportunity. Number three, You've got to ask the right questions. You've got to ask the right questions. A lot of times, we, we, we ask the wrong questions, okay? And the questions that we ask typically are this. Is it convenient for me? Okay? Is it convenient for me? And what do I get out of it? Before we will ever bend a knee or lend a helping hand, those are the two questions that we're going to ask. Is it convenient for me? And what can I get out of it? That's not the path of blessing. That's a a, a sort of a selfish attitude. Generosity isn't based upon the things that we gain. It's not based upon influence that we may grab hold of. In fact, generosity may at times involve sacrifice of your life. Proverbs chapter 22 verse number 9 says, Blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. See, blessing comes through generosity. Blessing comes by helping those people that are in need, those neighbors, those friends, those those people that may live miles and miles away from you. But being a blessing for those is how you become blessed in your life. It's not out of ambition of gain or, or some type of convenience, but it's through generosity. That we experience the blessing of God. So it's not a question of, uh, of, 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 of convenience or gain for us. It's a question of this. It's would God want me to use my resources in this way? That's the question that you need to ask. When an opportunity arises, ask if God would want you to use the resources in that way. I mean, God has given you this aim. Would He want you to use it in that way or not? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. I learned something actually this week called the Sandbox Covenant. And you can look it up online and read more about it. But basically, just to sum it up, God uses a Sandbox Covenant in this. And He says this. He says, I'm going to give you all of this stuff. I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you some talents. And I'm going to give you some treasure. But I'm asking you to take great responsibility in how you use it. You're only here for a limited time. The Bible says that our life is like a vapor. It's here it's gone. Are you making a difference? Are you leveraging what God has given you? Number four, eliminate expectations. 
Eliminate expectations. Don't expect anything in return. When you're seeking to, do, to be a blessing for somebody else, don't, don't, don't expect anything in return. I hear people all the time say, you know what, Lance? I do so much good for this person and that person, and all they do is step on me. So what? Don't do it for any type of expectations. You, you're sort of falling into the pharisaical mindset, so to speak. These Pharisees that we talk about, check this out. Mark chapter 12, we're going to read this. It says, Beware of, the, uh, of these teachers of religious law, for they like to parade around in flowing robes and receive respectful greetings as they walk in marketplaces. And how they love the seats of honor in synagogues and the head of the table at banquets. See, we fall into that category sometimes. We, we, we fall into this, this mindset that they, just like the Pharisees, they wanted the lavish things in life. They wanted the respect. They wanted people to talk about them really good. They expected a return for their godliness. Sometimes we do the same. We're not any different from them. And in fact, generous living sometimes has a cost to it. There's not always something that's going to be given back to you in return. And here's the thing. While people may not bless you in return, God will. Okay? While people may dog you, they may talk about you behind their back, you continue to bless them, you continue to love on them, and even though they may never give you anything back in return, God will bless you. We have to be generous without expectation. I love Matthew chapter 6, verse number 2. It says, when you give to someone in need, don't do, do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. If you try to be a blessing so that you'll get something in return, that's all you're ever going to get. God's probably not going to bless you near as much as if you will do it without expectation of anything else in return. And God will just heap blessings out on you. The last step is this, give your schedule to God. We got busy schedules, people. I understand it. Every single day, we, we have so many uh, appointments. We've got meetings. We've got long work days. We've got basketball practice. We've got all kinds of crazy stuff in our life. And we get so busy that we forget about God, don't we? You ever forget about God in your day? You get so busy, you forget about God. I do. And, and I, I'm, I'm in ministry. But that's we need to give God Every ounce of our schedule. Before you ever start the day, you need to look at your schedule and say, God, I'm giving it to you. I have to do these things, but I'm giving it to you. And I'm asking you to use me in whatever it is that I'm doing. Sometimes we don't have to rearrange our schedule. We can ask God to move right where we're at in our life. We can ask God to move at our job. We can ask God to move at basketball practice. We can ask God to move in those things. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8. It says, Then I heard the Lord ask him, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. It's a dangerous prayer to pray. Here am I. Send me. Most of you work out in the world. And you understand that the evils that await you. You understand the struggles that lie in front of you. But will you ever start the day and just say, Lord, here am I. Send me. He's calling you to be a messenger. He's calling you to be an ambassador. And you, you pray that prayer. You say, God, here am I. Send me. Send me into my job. Send me in, into my community. Send me into my family. We need to express generosity in all of those areas. I mean, you think about where you're at in life. And let's start right at home. <clears throat> Are you ever so busy you don't spend time with your kids? kids need your generosity. They don't need toys and all kinds of fun electronics. Sure, those are great to have. There's nothing wrong with your kids having those things, but they need you more than they need anything else. Are you being generous with your children? Are you being generous with kind words to your husband, your wife? Or are you being stingy? Think about your workplace. Are you being generous in your workplace? Somebody short a little cash, do you uh, go to, go to the, the soda fountain and get them, a, get them a drink? Take them out for lunch? Maybe somebody's behind on a project and you sacrifice your lunch time to help them finish up? That's the generosity we're talking about. Out in the community, those people that, that maybe they're on the side of the road, and I, I know it may not be safe for some of you to do that, but there's times that maybe we need to stop and help somebody. What about your neighbor, the one that lives across the street or somebody that lives in your neighborhood? Maybe they're moving and you need to sacrifice a TV show or a ball game so that you can go and help them. 
See, the lifestyle of generosity, it's not uh, even about money. Okay? We make everything about money. But this generosity that we're talking about, it's not about dollars and cents. It's about something so much more. Your time, your talents, and your treasures. Look at your life. How many of you are giving your leftovers to everybody else? And here's what I believe. This is what I believed all week. I was praying this morning. I just felt it even stronger. There's some of you, that's all you give people is leftovers. God's saying, I want you to give them your best. You give them your best, and I'll bless you like you've never been blessed before. I don't know where you're at today. But I know there's somebody in this place that is experiencing that right now. You're, you're wondering, man, I, life stinks, Lance. I have no fulfillment in my life. I'm tired of people. I'm tired of my family. Look at your heart. And see if you're being generous like God's called you to be. Give it a try. And see if that all doesn't turn around. When you start giving your best to God, when you start giving your best to people. I mean, imagine what would happen if all of us in this place, everybody that called Skyline Church their home, if we decided and we made a pact right now to begin giving people our very best. Imagine what would happen. Imagine the lives that would be changed. Imagine how much God would bless you. Imagine how much God would bless this church if we made the decision together to say, you know what, I'm not giving my leftovers anymore. But I'm going to give my very best to make a difference, to use what God has given me. You will be blessed beyond measure. God is the blessor. We are the blessed. He wants to take His bless, put it on our end, so that we become a blessing. That funny thing happens. The more of a blessing we become to other people, the more blessed we become. That's the way that it works. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's the way that it works in God's economy. Look at this. Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. Give and you will what? Receive. Your gift will return to you in full. But not just full. It says, press down and shake him together to make room for what? More. Running over and poured out into your lap. The amount that you give will determine the amount that you get back. Now I'm not going to stand up here and tell you. Something about prosperity theology. Okay, I'm not going to tell you that if you drop a thousand dollars in the offering plate, God's going to give you ten grand back this week. I'm not going to tell you that. I don't believe that. But I will tell you that what you give to people, what you even bring to this church, God will give you back that and more, some way, somehow. It may not be a new course or BMW. All right, but your life will be fulfilled like it never has before. It will be fulfilled like it, it never has before. Here's, here's the thing. The, the, the more generous you are with people, the better you become at it. The better you become at it, the more you do, the more joy that you get in your life. Guess what? The more you want to be generous to other people. So it's like a drug. Okay, Generosity is like this really cool drug that doesn't have long-term side effects. No emaciated face. No significant weight loss. Though some of us may want that. I don't know. But it's like this drug that is easy to become addicted to. And it has great benefits for you. You don't have to go to rehab. You can just enjoy what generosity does for your life. So I want to challenge you today to open up your heart to become a a blessing for others. To give God your best. To give other people your best. So that God can put His bless. I want to challenge you. There's nothing wrong with this stuff. But if this is your only focus in life, I'll guarantee you two things. If this is your only focus, you will not be able to look at your life and say, I'm bringing glory to God. If this is your only focus, I can guarantee you that if you take an honest look at your life, you can tell me, I'm not fulfilled. The land of being is not what God created us to live. He created us to be a blessing. So every head bowed and every eye closed. There's a name for God in the Bible. His name is Jehovah.
Jehovah Jireh, which means God our provider. All throughout his word, he promises provision for our life. But yet, somehow, we don't believe that. And so one of the questions that I want to ask you today is, do you trust Him? Do you trust that when God says, give, and it will be given unto you? Do you believe that? If so, maybe you need to take the challenge of generosity. You need to take the leftover challenge, right? And you need to become a blessing for somebody else. All of us raised our hands and said, I want to live a blessed life for this. Generosity is where the path to blessings is found. You want to live in God's success? You can be generous with what He's given you. And watch what He does in your life. Right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, some of you have heard about this, this idea of living a blessed life. And you realize, you know what? I, I don't even have God in my life. And you want to experience His grace today. You want to accept Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior. And right now, I want to ask this question. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. If you need to accept Christ in your life, I want you to raise your hand. Thank you for that. Anyone else? If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer. God, I come to you right now. I'm, I'm broken without you. I'm lost without you. I, I want to experience your joy in my life. I want to live a blessed life, but I know I can't do that without you being. So today, I ask Jesus into my heart. I ask Him to forgive me of my sin, God, through His blood, through the power of Your Holy Spirit, that You may cleanse me. But God, I don't want to stop there. I don't just want to rest in salvation. I want to be in Your hands and feet. I want to be a blessing to other people. God, thank You for saving pray that you will equip me to be a blessing in this world. If you just prayed that prayer right now, the angels rejoice because you crossed that line of faith. But I'm going to say a prayer for the rest of you here in just a second. And I know a lot of you. One of the things that we're blessed with is a generous people. But I also know that, that as human beings, we have a tendency to hold back in that generosity. So part of our vision at this church, we want to make a world impact. But we make that impact because we're generous people. So I'm going to pray for your hearts today. Father, as we come to you right now, all of us, Lord, sometimes struggle with selfishness. Whether it comes to what we bring to you each and every weekend or, or whether it's what we give to those people that are around us. Those people that are in need that we know, Lord, we could make a difference, even a small one in their life. Maybe it's a kind word. Maybe it's an ear. Maybe it's a helping hand. Maybe it is a few bucks to put a meal on the table. But God, as a church, may you convict our hearts that we may push past selfishness to let you put your bless on our ink so that we can become a blessing to world that exists around us. And as we do that, God, let your Holy Spirit go before us. That lives can be changed for eternity. Not because of what we do. Because we can't boast. But we can boast of the power that you give to each and every one of us to make a difference in this world. God, we love you today. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, God. We praise you for all that we are. Glory to death.